First of all, uh, allow me to join my fellow panelists in thanking Thierry for uh, giving us the opportunity to express ourselves at the World Policy Conference uh, and thanking uh, Patrick for facilitating uh, these uh, discussions. So I have a very ambitious title, I'm aware, the future of healthcare and how to get there in eight minutes. So please bear with me. Um, I think what most fascinating thing about healthcare is that it impacts all of us from the day we are born to our last day. It is a crucial part of the interaction with our loved ones, yet its basic principles have not changed for centuries. If you look at this picture from the Middle Ages, you see in the middle a knowledgeable doctor, possibly assisted by a nurse on the left, which tries to solve one narrow issue of a helpless patient on the right. Of course, the tools and remedies have changed, but the basic principles and the way we approach healthcare today are still the same. What I'm trying to convey to you today is that we're on the cusp of a healthcare revolution and that there is truly a time, which is now, where healthcare is going to profoundly change, especially in the way it is delivered. And I'm going to give you four main uh, items for which I think healthcare is going to change. Healthcare is going to be highly personalized, healthcare is going to be unified, it's going to be preventive, and it's going to be embedded. Of course, this is an optimistic scenario, and it carries many risks, but I'm going to go into those topics and provide you with examples of startups and companies that did not exist five or ten years ago and that are trying to go in this direction. Thinking about personalization, today drugs and treatments are rarely differentiated, yet we know every single human being is unique. There are the, there's the development of autologous therapies, which is a very fancy word to say from the self, and you have companies like Novartis and Kite Pharma that just received uh, FDA approval for therapies that are reprogramming your own immune system to find cancer cells. So we are taking your own immune system and using its power so that you can treat yourself the tumors in your body. Of course, many of you have heard about genomics, and companies uh, like 23andMe are trying to democratize genomics. The way they work is they send you a little tube, you spit in it, and a week later, you send it to the post, and a week later, they give you a full detailed genomic analysis of your ancestry and what healthcare condition you may have. And this is only for a couple of hundred dollars. So this is extremely impressive. And looking at the quantified self and all the wearables you have, like the Fitbits and all the things that measure anything from your heart rate to the number of steps you take, this is truly happening now and allowing each one of us to start measuring what we do in order to better act on it. Now, looking at how healthcare is unified. Today, healthcare is still very fragmented. You have cardiologists, you have orthopedic surgeons, you have people trying to treat each and every single organ. Yet, we know many diseases, such as diabetes or cancer, are whole, and you need a truly holistic approach. But this goes beyond physical and mental. The physical and uh, it goes beyond the body. It also goes to physical and mental. Body and mind are truly integrated, and a number of startups are, stri are starting to tackle mental health, examples of which include Mindspace, which is a meditation app that, in, uh, from your iPhone, allows you to meditate five to ten minutes a day, which has been scientifically proven to improve both your mental, obviously, but also your physical health. Interoperability is going to be tr crucial, and companies like Flatiron are developing electronic health records for cancer patients that allow to track all the individual healthcare steps that a cancer patient is undergoing, all the interaction it has with different doctors, in order to provide the next doctor a truly unified vision of the patient's um, state. And of course, there is interdisciplinarity, and we've talked a lot about it already on this panel. If you think, for instance, about this amazing lens that Google and Novartis developed, which has a blood glucose monitor on uh, the cusp of the, um, of the lens. So just by wearing this contact lens, you get your blood sugar measured in real time through your teardrops. And this is something that has been done by sharing the expertise of tech people, designers, and doctors. Thinking about how healthcare is going to be more preventive, in order to have truly prevention, which is an oft quoted word, but not still very effective at the moment, you need three elements. You need awareness, so you need to know uh, what diseases exist and what you can do about it. And social media are increasing, increasingly playing a huge role in addressing millions of people 
about serious health issues. And you can look, for example, a couple of weeks ago, there was an Instagram campaign about the risks and danger of mental health. And it could reach many people, especially young people, by talking their language. Once you have awareness, you need access. So what if you don't have an amazing hospital or a doctor next door? Again, digital companies like Babylon are trying to bring the doctor to your house, and they offer a service that allows you to connect to a GP within minutes. Once you have access, you also need behavior change, and this is probably the toughest. We all know we need to exercise, we all know we need to eat better, yet we fail at doing it most of the time. Some companies are looking at gamification and fun ways to introduce uh, behavioral changes. So I encourage you to try Zombie Run, which allows you to run uh, every day in the park by making you believe that you are followed by zombies and that you have to run as fast as possible. And this has been proven very helpful in making people to exercise far more than gyms or other things. Now, finally, healthcare is going to be embedded. Healthcare is going to be embedded within your home, and there are already um, home agents like Amazon's uh, Echo, which is built on its AI platform Alexa, that is playing the role of uh, basic health, uh, is providing basic healthcare insights uh, within the comfort of your home. In your workplace, and uh, companies like Limeed are helping uh, companies engaging with the well being of their employees in a fun and social way, but also in your environment, thinking about, about physical exercise. You know if you want to bike or walk to work, for instance, for your physical health, then it may, be wor it, it may do much more harm than good if you're in a very polluted area. Companies like Plume Lab are trying to have very small captors of air quality so that they can provide you with the best way to walk or to bike to work so that you don't have more harm by doing this physical exercise in your daily commute. Now, how to get there? And I'm just going to give a very brief lessons from uh, the incubator I've just joined. So it's an incubator based in London that aims at building new tech companies to solve the developed world's toughest social issues. And our first mission is to improve women and girls' emotional and mental health, which is a very crucial topic for which awareness has raised, but still many solutions are lacking. What makes it efficient in terms of innovating? It, we have a very diverse crowd, so we have 50 people from extremely diverse background. There are doctors, there are tech people, there are designers, there are business people, there are policy makers. And we are all put in a bag and we're trying to shake this bag, hoping that innovative solutions are going to come from this cross-fertilization of different um, people. It's mission-led, so we are not just innovating for fun or because entrepreneurship is fancy. We're innovating to actually solve social issues and looking at ones that have been massively underserved, like mental health. It is time-bound. We have six months to find ideas of businesses, otherwise we're going to be kicked out, which puts a bit of pressure, but is also efficient. It's supportive, but not prescriptive. So we are supported by the incubator, but they do not tell us anything about where we should do, what we should do, where we should look, or the solutions we should get at. So we may end up building the next zombie run. And finally, it's user-centric. And we've talked about the importance of patient, and I just want to end on this final note, which for me is the most crucial. It's extremely important to live and breathe like your user or like the patient you're trying to solve the issue of. You need to make sure that what you're building is truly adding value to them by ideally being as close as possible to them and living their life. It's the only solution to make sure that what you're doing is going to, make, to have a truly um, profound impact. Thank you.